Hi uh, guys. Well, it is starting to feel like a hot, sticky summer night here. As summer starts to settle in uh, to uh, Central Florida here on April 9th, on Tuesday, April 9th, we might see our first 90 degree day here tomorrow, or damn close to our first 90 degree day on April 10th in uh in in florida which uh might or might not have something to do uh with uh this uh just curious little tidbit chronicle of the collapse uh but before i get into it we're going to talk about jellyfish but before we get into jellyfish, I want to thank my buddy Michael Campy. Michael Campy for closing his rant today uh, with this quote from Paul Watson. I have, I have heard uh, this quote before. It is great. You know who Paul Watson is. He was uh, the, the head of Sea Shepherds Society. Uh, I don't, I don't know what year he made this quote. Uh, uh, Michael, do you know what year this quote was? But anyway, it's when there were seven and a half billion humans. So probably a year ago. <clears throat> quote, there are seven and a half billion of us, meaning humans, and every year there are fewer and fewer of everything else except for the slaves we breed for food and amusement and I would put a little asterisk and jellyfish which we'll get to in a moment. Gorillas do not contribute to climate change, pollution of the ocean, deforestation, war, and habitat destruction. They are gentle, vegetarian, shy, intelligent, self-aware, sentient beings whose existence benefits the planet and gives her, and gives her, and gives her, gives her hope for the future. What, what human being, what human being can equal a gorilla for the virtues of harmlessness, sustainable living, peacefulness, and ecological intelligence? Not one of us. So, in my opinion, the life of a gorilla is not only of more value than the life of a human being. It is a hundred times more valuable as are whales, snails, bees, and trees. Thank you, uh, Brother Paul Watson. Paul Watson, uh, I, I still count him as one of my few heroes now I did have some problems with, with Paul a few years ago, seven or eight years ago, when Paul Watson was my age, at age 64, for the first time in his life, he bred. He brought the, the man who just made that quote, Paul Watson understands as much as any human being on this planet that the reason this planet is fucked is because there are too many humans. Paul Watson knows more than any other human being on this planet the only way to save the planet is to stop breeding and at age 64 he could not keep his pecker in his pants, and we all know goddamn why he found some little hottie, uh, one half his age, and uh, she said, if you want this nookie, 
you're going to fill it up. And he was so terrified uh, of losing some little hottie, probably one half his age. Could someone please do some research, find out how old uh, Paul Watson's wife is? My guess is she was one of these little hippie chick, uh, doomer chicks uh, that, that, that he met, uh, on, you, you, you know, uh, what the Sea Shepherds do. And, uh, and she said, if you want this nookie, you're going to uh, do the single worst thing you can do to this planet, and that is pull your pecker out of your pants, and I'm going to let my knickers down, and we're going to fuck the planet. We're going to fuck the gorillas and, and every other species. Uh, the, we're going to fuck the gorillas. We're going to fuck the whales. Uh, you, you, Paul Watson, I, I, I am embarrassed for you, brother. But anyway, uh, other than that little oversight, Paul Watson is still one of my uh, heroes, but I'm not here to talk about Paul Watson and his wayward 64-year-old pecker. I'm here to talk about jellyfish. Jellyfish. Uh, so I did this thing, the, the, the good news roundup yesterday, and, and, and I said, you know, it's not bad news for everybody that if you're a jellyfish, you can probably read the news uh, and feel pretty good about your future. Uh, you know, in my soft white underbelly, uh, interview as, as I told Mark, it's a damn good century to be a jellyfish. And, and, and I, I say this a little bit joking, but I'm not joking about it. I, I am reading the tea leaves uh, and, and I have reached the conclusion after being down here since 2008 reading this that there is one kind of fellow earthling uh, that is benefiting uh, for, from the shit uh, that we're doing, that humans are doing to this planet, and, and that is jellyfish. And, and I am more convinced than ever that it will in fact be jellyfish that are going, you know, to be the genetic stock that repopulates the planet over the next, uh, what is it, 10 million year cycle as this planet tries to recover from humans. It's jellyfish uh, who, who are going to be the winners. And then, uh, so I, I have that, uh, I, I mentioned that yesterday. And I come over here on the mainstream media last night, and here it is, the French News Service, reporting out of Venezuela, jellyfish, huh, invade Venezuelan waters, worrying fishermen. A thick bloom of jellyfish of varying hues drifts in the turquoise, turquoise waters of Aragua in Venezuela a surreal vision attributed to climate change that has decimated fishing stocks. This is Elvis Morillo, age 59, a fisherman uh, from the village of Chow. Quote, it is like there are flowers in the sea. This has never happened before. The invasive cannonball jellyfish is filling fishermen's nets in a surge that, that the Environment Ministry attributes to warming waters from climate change and, and a decline in jellyfish predators such as sharks and sea turtles. At the same time, uh, Quote, sardines and other species that serve as fishing bait have disappeared. Fishing 
is at its lowest level in years, said Gustavo Carrasque of the NGO Azul Ambientalistas. Uh, all right. Globally, jellyfish populations have soared. Researchers have in fact warned of a tipping point, a jellyfish tipping point, in which the oceans could go from being dominated by fish populations to jellyfish, mostly as a result of pop quiz. Climate change or overfishing? If you said overfishing, give yourself a gold star, but of course that's another way of saying humans. Uh, so uh, whatever, they, they don't cite the report about a looming jellyfish tipping point in which there are going to be more jellyfish in the oceans than fish uh, pretty soon. Now it does not mention whether there's going to be more jellyfish or plastic in the ocean in a couple of more. Uh, my guess is it's going to be kind of even. Uh, fish are going to disappear. They're going to be a thing of the past and we're going to have jellyfish and plastic uh, is what will dominate our oceans. The gelatinous creatures which like Donald Trump, huh? The gelatinous creatures which, like Donald Trump, do not have a heart, a brain, or complex organs thrive in harsh conditions and need little oxygen. This is why uh, this is the century of the jellyfish. They are taking full advantage of the harsh uh, warm water conditions with little oxygen that uh, humans are creating. They don't have shells. They're not affected by ocean acidification. Jamer Scott Frias, a researcher at the Institute of Zoology and Tropical Ecology at the Central University of Venezuela said, this is an atypical event, completely abnormal. A few individuals had been observed in recent years, but the increase in the jellyfish population this year <coughs> exceeded previous estimates. Scott Frias said the reasons for the jellyfish surge were not yet clear. The jellyfish bloom and, to add to that, the presence of the invasive coral. The invasive coral Eunomia stolonifera, which smothers native corals, have become a headache for local fishermen. You might recall, uh, it, it might ain't going to happen, uh, rant, a couple of weeks ago they were putting out this Hopium article about uh, how they're going to restore coral reefs because they found this handy dandy coral that seems to be doing fine. If you've heard the term Stolonifera, which smothers native corals. So uh, add those to the jellyfish have become a headache for local fishermen. Uh, this is Fernando Maiora, head of the Fishermen's Council in Chironi. Quote, it has been almost nine months without fish production. With the problem of jellyfish and invasive corals, we don't know what to do. The fish have disappeared. 
and uh, Chuao fishermen who would bring in between 3,000 and 5,000 kilograms. That's about, what is that, five to 11,000 pounds of fish per week have seen their yields drop to between 500 and 1,000 kilograms, said Douglas Martinez, a fisherman. Mayora said that Venezuela should draw inspiration from countries such as Mexico, which exploits jellyfish commercially, exporting them to Asian countries where it is used, where jellyfish are used in gastronomy, in gastronomy, which is a fancy way of that these Chinese people who will eat anything just feed it to the Chinese or the pharmaceutical industry. So uh, I guess there's some use for jellyfish in the pharmaceutical industry. So uh, anyway, you can expect to see uh, jellyfish showing up in your uh, Chinese restaurants. Uh, it will not surprise me one bit. Uh, if you start seeing jellyfish uh, on the menu at, uh, at Asian restaurants because that's all that they're going to be catching here. Uh, it, 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 it's no joke, people. Uh, if you're a jellyfish, uh, you're going to have a good century. If you are anything else except a fucking jellyfish, uh, sorry, you're fucked. Kind of like Paul Watson's young wife. Anyway, uh, I gotta wrap this up because I need to see if I have any uh, jellyfish chilling in the freezer. <sighs> Get out there and enjoy eating your jellyfish while you still can. Bye, guys. And you want some jellyfish for dinner tonight, little dog?